Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to discuss about the RTMT that is our real time monitoring tool. How we can use this tool and what all are the things we can do in this like whether we can uh, take the traces in the real time or the historical reports or we can check the performance viewers, we can check the audit log viewer, we can check the syslog viewer, like what all are the things we can do in this real-time monitoring tool. So this is, these all are the things which we are going to discuss today. And before starting, if you are new to my channel, please like, share and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notifications of all my upcoming videos. Okay, so let's start it. So before starting, what you should know, you should have idea about not the not I, I'm not saying that you should have uh, an advanced level of experience in all these things, but you should have idea about these things uh, before starting this RTMT tool. So you should have uh, you should have a uh, information about CUCM configuration and the operation. And then you must have an idea about this is QIS voice gateway configuration and operation like, uh, like what all are the configuration uh, we can do in the gateway and what configuration we can do in the CUCM manager and how it operates, okay? And then you should have a basic understanding of these things like SIP session initiation protocol, like, um, how this SIP works, what all are the things we need to do in the SIP and how we can read the traces of SIP. And then ISDN, there we, we can uh, check the ISDN traces as well. You should have an idea about the skinny client protocol and the H323 protocol. Why am I saying like you should have a basic understanding of all this? Because if you are checking it something in the real time monitoring tool, you must, you will check <coughs> the traces as well, then you should have idea about like how to read the traces. That's why I'm saying you should have an idea about these things, like the basic understanding. Okay, so first we will uh, discuss about this serviceability tools overview and that is real time monitoring tool. And after that, in my upcoming lectures, I will be discussing about the troubleshooting methodology, like the problem description, information collection. Problem description means uh, like if somebody is saying, um, I, I had an issue with one of the call, but you don't know how to start the troubleshooting on that call. Then I will tell you what is a good description, what is a bad description, and what all the, are the things you need to collect from the user that comes under information collection. And then we'll discuss about the case studies, like uh, what will happen when there is a drop call and how we can troubleshoot it. And if somebody is not answering the phone, if you are unable to place the calls and all these things like one way audio, active control not working, or video call and immediately drops, call drops after answering, video encryption not working. So I will be discussing all these case studies in my upcoming lectures. And then I'll discuss about the database replication as well, like how the database replication occurs, how we can check whether our database replication is occurring it or not. So let's start it with the RTMT tool. So first, Unified CM Service Ability Introduction. So there are three primary interfaces into the call manager. That is, I can say the first is real-time monitoring tool. We can uh, check these things into this RTMT tool from this RTMT tool. Another thing is that is OS admin graphical user interface and the third one is OS admin CLI interface. So you can check these three. You can check these things from these three RTMT tool, OS admin GUI and OS admin CLI, okay? And then RTMT is essential to serviceability and monitoring and what all are the things you can do in RTMT that is pre-canned alerts, perfmon, Trace and log central, alert central, syslog viewer, audit log viewer, these all are the things you can perform in the RTMT tool. And this provides redundancy and resiliency as well. Okay, so let's start with the real time monitoring tool, how it looks, from where you can download it, and all these things. Okay, so real time monitoring tool overview. So this RTMT is a primary serviceability interface for unified CM. 
So this is a primary interface for call manager and from where you can download it, you once you log into your call manager, you can see there will be an option of application and under that application, you will see the option of plugins and under the plugins, you will be able to see this Cisco Unified Real-Time Monitoring Tool for Linux and Cisco Unified Real-Time Monitoring Tool for Windows. From this, you are working on Windows machine, machine so you need to download it. Let me, let me just uh, show you as well from where you can download it in the CUCM. Okay, so I, I logged in on my CUCM. Let me show you from where you can download this RTMP tool. You just need to go to the application and under the application, you will be able to see this plugins. And once you click on this plugins, you will be able to see so many options, not just one Cisco Unified Real-Time Monitoring tool. There will be so many options. So once you click on plugins, I just uh, clicked on the find and there you can see there are so many plugin names which you can download it. And in this, you can check your Cisco Unified Real-Time Monitoring tool for Linux and for Windows. And you can see it's at the last, so you can click on this download and then your RTMT tool will begin the download. Let me, let me just uh, click on this download and then it will, it will, it, it will just uh, log in here within some time. And meanwhile, let's just continue with our slides. So the first is RTMT's primary serviceability interface. We already downloaded it. It is use, it is for Linux and the Windows based client, same thing. Before that, like once you download this RTMT tool and once you install it and open it, you will require a 12.0 plus requires JRE 1.8. So if you are installing RTMT 12.0, it requires Java runtime environment 1.8. So it should be 1.8 and above. Only then it will work. Okay. It provides the following serviceability functionality. What all are the functionality it will provide? Okay. So it provides uh, it, it can monitor performance counters. It includes OS and CM applications telemetry. You can uh, check the real time and the historical data as well. You can uh, go to the alert center and you can set up the alerts like when do you need an alert and what, what are the description should be there in that alert. You, you can uh, provide the following like trace and log central, pre can screen, syslog viewer. I, these all are the things which I already discussed earlier, like syslog viewer, device search, analysis manager, and session trace. That will only be a SIP. In device search, you can check uh, when, your, uh, when your phone went down, when your phone went unregistered, or when it backs registered, and all. You can check it under the device search. And this screenshot is for like, once you install, it will ask for a Java virtual machine. So you need to click on this one so that you can install the Java as well, which it required. So once you log in on the RTMT tool and you entered the IP or the host name and the admin, admin password and the username, you will be able to see so many options like file, system, performance, and all these things. So now, uh, as of now here, we are talking about the performance thing first, and then we will continue with the performance log viewer, system log viewer, audit log viewer, trace central, alert central, and all these things. So this performing counters have classes, counters, and instances per node. This is per node. So this performance have all these things, classes, counters, and the instances. So now counters can be viewed in table view or graph. You can check it once you open the, once you click on the performance and once you right click on the right side of that, any, any of the server, you will be able to see the graphical representation I will show you in the next slides how it can how you can check it and the polling rate you can adjust from 10 to 5 as well the minimum is 5 and the default is 10 seconds right so for the description like once you are clicking on this right click on this one and once you click on the counter description you need to enter a description 
what like what this belongs to counter description can be accessed by right clicking on them and after that you can enter it like this description is this represents the average time in milliseconds and all these things this is already written there and you can uh, you can add the custom alerts as well like custom alerts could be set up against any performance counter given a threshold here once you click on this one and once you click on the right click you will be able to see this option that is alert slash threshold and you can just uh, add the threshold here okay this is the graphical view uh, which i told you in the previous slide once you click on the performance and after clicking on the performance you you can click on anyone and you will be able to see this graphical representation of all these things this is default graph view okay and here you can see and uh, you can just choose any one of the any one of the graphical representation which is showing here you can click on any one like select this one like you can see it here in the yellow it is selected and once you right click on this one you will be able to see these options zoom chart remove monitoring properties or start counter login okay and once you click on the monitoring properties so because you can adjust the monitoring properties that's why i'm saying you can click on the monitoring properties now you already clicked on the monitoring properties it will open this counter property like we here you can see the description and the data sample number of data sample thousands number of data points shown on chart 50 you can change it here and view value as absolute delta or percentage delta you can choose it here as well. this is just for the modification of this monitoring properties okay then we have this performance counters like how we can create the new categories here you can see once you click on the performance tab you can check it here as well you will be in the performance and you will be able to see this tftp phones call manager and trunks once you right click on this trunk you will be able to see this new category tab because if you want to create any new category to monitor uh, like a group of performance counters you can just create a new category and if you want to once you uh, create a new category and once you want to save that performance counter and other rtmt tabs you can just click on Control alt p and you can save it or you can go to file profile and save here you can save it as okay then we have this uh, performance counter based alerting now uh, in the previous slides, we click, we right click on any one of the graph and we clicked on the monitoring properties and we change the values. If you want to change it, we can change it there. Now, if you want to set any alert, you right click on that, right click on that view, click on this set alert slash properties. And once you click on this one, right now, what you are doing, you are creating alerts, right? so once you click on this set alert properties you will be able to see this another option and here you need to click on this enable alert or maybe it, it, it default it already clicked by default here you need to select the severity whether you want to give a warning or any other thing and once you click on this drop down you will be able to see other option as well okay now in the description you can enter what you want to enter like here we just entered custom IO weight monitor alert. It's just a monitoring alert. Okay. And once you click on, once you enter this description and click on next, you will be able to see this threshold value, value calculated and the duration. Okay. So if you want to trigger alert when following condition is met, this thing is there. Trigger alert when following condition is met. You can put the value here or value calculate as absolute delta or delta percentage and the duration like here you can see duration trigger alert only when value constantly below or over threshold for 120 seconds i entered 120 seconds here you can enter 60 seconds you can enter 180 seconds you can enter anything here right that depends on you <clears throat> okay then we have this uh, once you click on this next you will be able to see this alert properties frequency and schedule like uh you can trigger alert on every poll or trigger up to one alert within 30 minutes, within 60 minutes, 180 minutes. That depends on your configuration. And trigger alert when it occurs, non-stop monitoring. It will be a non-stop monitoring if you want to 
like do this thing and if you want to trigger alert every day then you can do that as well between you can just choose the start and end time once you click on next it will give you a last page that is enable email like whether you get it on email or any other thing so once you click on this enable email only then you will be getting an email and trigger alert action is page on call and you can configure it and user defined email text you can enter the email text here as well like what description you need to get in that email right this will be the uh, email destination okay so in the next slides we will be discussing like how this email thing works as well okay i hope uh, the things will be clear till this slide okay then next we have performance counter based alerting we already uh, created that okay we already created the alerts and once the threshold is reached at that time of particular like we we entered the polling interval 30 seconds if the alert is reached then you will be getting that particular alert okay alert details when this alert details are emailed alert details are emailed when enable email option is checked this one when this enable email option is checked you will be getting that alert on email and your smtp server should be configured and configured alert action includes email destination this will be the email destination that is trigger alert action page on call okay then we have this performance counter collection like how we can uh, collect this thing so on this one you can right click on the replication and once you click on this one you will be able to see this start counter logging earlier we clicked on new category when we want to create one now you need to right click on this replication and start counter logging it's just not not on the replication on tftp on cpu you can you can do uh, on those as well okay so right click on the category tab and then you can click on this start counter logging okay once you click on this start counter logging you will be able to see this thing that counter logging configuration okay and make sure this will be a csv file you can see hostname and file extension will be appended to log file name specified and this will be a dot csv okay you can just enter the file name and okay right so if you don't know like uh, on which screen we are you just need to go to the this like system performance counter logging configuration and counter logging config controls file size and count this counter logging configuration it controls your file size like uh, uh like 5000 kb here and maximum log file count is 10 like system performance counter logging configuration this is the configuration which you can do okay and for this log collection your rtmt must be running right rtmt must be running for collection to take place got it then we have this performance log viewer okay rtmt performance log viewer can load csv can load csv log files from from where rtmt performance log viewer can load risdc performance data and the saved files from other clusters as well like if something is already there then you can just uh, load it from the risdc and the saved files from other clusters as well. okay add or remove multiple counters from single file if you want to add any counter if you want to remove any counter you can you can do that here as well okay zoom in zoom out yeah you i believe you already know that once you once we right click on this graphical representation you will be able to see that thing that zoom in zoom out limitations limitation is you can view only one file at a time and from one server at a time like this is the file section dialog and if you want to check any you can if you want to check you will be able to see only one at a time and once you click on this one open file you will be able to see this one and you can just only highlight the color you cannot change the color or anything else to that counter you can just highlight the color hard to highlight counters you can't you can't actually don't add too many and change colors like, like instead of uh, adding too many counters just change the color or highlight okay then we have this thing like cpu and uh, cpu utilization like if 
uh, something is uh, not happening right, then you can check the CPU utilization here. And for that, uh, you need to just click on this CPU and memory and you can check the utilization here. So low available virtual memory alert raised at 85%. We need to do this thing as well. Like when the alert will be raised, you need to set the threshold at 85% and once it's at 85%, it will create an alert. Like I will show you in the next slide, like what will be the recommendation? What will be the recommended thing? Like if we are using 7.5 K OVA, or two cores and 10K OVA or four cores. So total CPU usage, you, we can say good will be less than 68%, 68 to 79% is warning and greater than 80% is bad. Okay, this is for all these things like total CPU usage, this one, process CCM, this one, high weight, this one, and process CCM VM size, this one. We have already like this is the recommendation from Cisco. Like what will be the good, what will be bad, what will be warning, on what will be the maximum limit. So now the next thing is unified CM alarms versus alerts. Like what's the main difference between the alarms and the alerts? We will be discussing one by one. So alarm is it generated by applications or services or platform. Alarm will be generated by either application or service or platform, but alerts will only be generated by the alert manager collector service, whether it's a primary or secondary. That's a best practice, actually, first primary and then secondary. Okay, so these are only generated by alert manager collector service. Alarm library embedded into services or slash application forwards them to destination it's just it's just forwarded to destinations and this alerts trigger from from where these alerts can trigger it triggers from alarm the same thing from alarm this alerts will trigger this alert will trigger from the performance counter as well this alert will trigger from the system performance and condition cp utilization memory utilization uh, syslog messages these alerts can trigger from all these things and alarm definition and spherities are predefined and it is available in the alarm catalog. The main thing is alarms can trigger alerts. These alarms can trigger alerts and these alerts can be logged as alarms. So once you get that alert on your email, that is an alarm because these alerts can be logged as alarms, right? And only the admin can adjust the alarm notification destination and filter them based on severity right like here you can see alarm of one cpu it will create an alert and then that alert will show you as an alarm and it's under like like so-called syslog alternate syslog syslog snmp trap or remote syslog okay and then we have a unified cm service ability alarm configuration and definition for that you need to log in on the cisco unified service ability okay and then you can just click on the alarm and you will be able to see two options that is configuration and the definition. And what all are the things in the definition or configuration, okay? So in the alarm configuration, you will be able to see alarm event level, emergency, alarm destination, like this thing, local syslog, alternate, remote, and SDL trace file. And in the alarm definitions catalog, you will be able to see the alarm information. This is the alarm definitions catalog. In the next slide, I will show you the alarm configuration screenshot. Okay, so this is the alarm information. It provides this definition and reason codes unknown. Uh, here you can you can put it here like unified CM has failed for unknown reason, heartbeat stopped, router thread died, timer thread died, critical thread died, like all these things. And what will be the recommended action? Monitor for other, other alarms and restart call manager service if necessary. Collect the files if available, SDL and SDA trace files if available. So all these things you can put it under the alarm definition. This is the alarm definition or alarm information we can see. In the next slide, let's check it out for the alarm configuration. Like what are other things you can configure in the alarm? So you need to first choose the server, choose the service group and the service. These all are the main things you need to choose it first. Okay, then in the local syslogs, you need to check this enable alarm. It, it's checked by default, but maybe if sometimes uh, someone 
um, mistakenly unchecked it. But if, once, once you're checking the alarm configuration, this check should be there, enable alarm, okay? And in the remote syslogs, this enable alarm is also there, okay? So you need to choose this one as well. So remote syslogs, it cannot send to another unified CM server. It defaults to local seven facility, cannot change. Okay, then we have SDI trace, SDL trace, SDL trace is enable alarm, SDI trace enable alarm. So as of now, uh, like I think from after CUCM 10, we are using SDL traces only. SDI trace will be, I think SDI traces was earlier before the CUCM 10. So as of now, SDL traces are only there. Then we have this thing alert central, like how we can uh, add the alerts, how we can uh, configure all these alerts. So you need to go to this alert central, alert central, and then uh, here you can see alert, in the alert central, if you want to check the alert history, it will display only last 100 uh, transactions, I can say, or last 30 minutes alerts. It archived to CSV and logged to syslog. Okay, and how you can uh, set these alerts, you need to go to this system and after the system, you will be able to see this tools and alert. Once you click on this alert, you will be able to see so many options. So uh, in this alert, first we will, uh, uh, we will configure this email server, alert detail, then we have clear alert or clear all alerts. We can alert, we can set the properties of this alert. We can reset all alerts to default configuration as well. Let's discuss it one by one. So first we have this config email server. So uh, we already at uh, alert central, okay. It can be sent out via email, yes. So if there is any alert, it should be sent out via email on our emails. Okay, so once you click on that, you first we need to uh, like config the email server as well. And once you click on that config email server, like we were here at uh, RTMT system tools alert and config email server. Once you click on email server, you will be able to see this window. Config mail server to send email alert. Mail server, as you should know, or outbound.cisco.com like here. Let's just an example, port number and the sender user ID. Okay, it, it's um, most of the time it should be like rtmt underscore admin at the red domain name. Okay, once you click on okay, you will be able to see this alert action, like action list default, page on call or test. Like our destination should be page on call we will click on add and then we will be having this description you can like enter it here and the recipients like the email email ids you can enter it here and then once you click on okay it will you can just suspend or resume alert as well and whether you want to suspend all alerts for this proper or you want to uh, add it per server or you want it to add it as a cluster wide then you can just choose it and click okay so alerts can be suspended or disabled per node or cluster wide. Thresholds, alert notifications interval and severity can be adjusted in the set alert properties that will be on the next slide. We can uh, reset back to default configuration as well. We can reset all alerts to default configuration, I, which I already discussed in the previous slide. Okay, now we have this RTMT AMC alert to redundancy. Alert manager collector service in charge of built-in and custom alerting. So this service should be activated like this. This is service is the in charge of this alerting. By default, AMC service calls counters, alarms, events every 30 seconds. And we can just uh, uh, degrade it to 15 as well. We can go down till 15, this calling rule. And AMC has primary and failover collector here as well, primary collector and the failover collector, right? Okay. Then we have this thing, alert central, alert email process. So AMC service is responsible for mailing out alert. So uh, once there is an alert and it will be sending out to the email, this service is responsible, that is AMC service. And don't forget to set AMC failover collector, this one, AMC failover collector, okay? And alert emails will be from rtmt underscore admin and your domain name, which we already discussed. This, this rtmt underscore admin at the rate domain name. Domain name is retrieved from the platform's domain name conference. You should know about your domain name, okay? 
and then we have this alert central trace download if you want to download the traces alert central trace then what you can do so you will be in the alert properties and once you click on enable alert and these are the servers from which you can you want to download you can just check it here you can choose it here you can enter the description like this alert occurs when the core dump file found event is generated this indicates that a core dump file has been found in the system this like you can enter the description here you can enter the severity as well like whether it's a critical warning major minor anything okay once you click on next you will be able to see in the alert properties threshold you can choose the threshold you can trigger it uh, when this log file should be downloaded and once you click on next you will be on the frequency and schedule when you where when you want to uh, when you want this trace to be downloaded okay trigger alert on every poll triggered when it occurs non-stop monitoring we already discussed about uh, these earlier okay trace download parameters you can you can just click on this one check it enable trace download after that it will ask for a sftp and we can say the username and password because uh, trace download will allow you to download with the help of uh, sftp or ftp server only okay you can choose the protocol ip address username password port and the path as well so once you do this con these configuration and after that this enable email uh, sftp response is this one like uh, once you click on this one test connection it will say success while connecting this one success while connecting this one and all and click ok after clicking on ok it will open this alert properties email notification you can click on enable email and the destination and save right so this trace download parameter allows it to download traces yeah the same thing which i already uh, told you traces collected at the time of an alert could be essential for troubleshooting like if there is an alert and there uh, might be an issue someone reported so you should need an you should need a uh, traces or logs for that particular time and once you configure this thing your trace is already downloaded it so it will help you in the troubleshooting as well okay then we have this thing like feature versus network services i hope you already uh, if you are working in cucm environment then you should know about these services like what are the services in control center feature services and what are the services in the network service so feature services that are those services can, that can be activated or deactivated example call manager service or tftp service in the network services services that are always activated it cannot be deactivated right and service manager started by inet rd and maintained by inet tab it cannot stop start it cannot stop start or restart it each service has its own restart limit service managers logs you can check it here like file get active log platform service manager startup log and serve m log here okay then we have this thing like a uh, few things like service manager has its own alarm catalog see unify we need to go to the unified cm service ability you can check the alarm definition system alarm catalog and service manager alarm catalog here you can see whether that service stopped or it uh, reaches the maximum restarts or any any services down like here you can see in this it show it is showing service stopped service exceeded maximum restarts critical service down like all these things then we have this trace and log central in the trace and log central we have this thing remote browse collect files and the query wizard so remote browse it allows you to browse trace slash log files for services slash applications and system logs you can download selected files from the browse window as well for the collect files it allows you to collect log or trace files for particular service or particular application and system logs which is matching the given time range query wizard you can run a query you can save a query as well it allows you to query for service application and system logs given a match string what what string or what time range you are entering it you can even save a query you can run a query as well schedule collection real time trace or collect the crash time schedule collection you can 
uh, schedule the collection as well for any particular job or particular for the particular trace files. Real time trace, you can check the real time traces for the real time call as well. You can check the historical traces as well. You can collect the crash dump as well. Like if somebody if something is crashed and you can you want to uh, check the uh, crash dump files, you can uh, you can collect it as well. It allows you to collect code dump files for a given service or application and match time frame. Okay. Then we have this trace and log central remote browse. So we are under trace and log central. We will discussing about the remote browse, collect files, query wizard, which we already discussed earlier. So you need to click on, on a, you need to click on this uh, remote browse, and in the remote browse you will be able to see these your particular notes, right? And uh, we can use to see files on the server. We can uh, check the service logs, system logs, audit logs, crash dump files, download or delete. Like these all are the notes. You can check the you can check the Cisco call manager service. You you are you need to collect the SDL traces. Click on the SDL and you can choose the particular time frame and all these things and you can download it from here okay you can collect log traces from multiple nodes on demand and collection done over https and can be cancelled okay so if once you click on the collect files like i said earlier we were discussing about the remote browse now we are discussing about this collect files once you click on this collect files you need to choose the service or the servers First, you need to choose the servers like we, I selected Cisco call manager and I don't know from uh, which which node the uh, the alert or any alarm is raised or anything. So I will just choose all servers after choosing the server. It will ask for the service. OK, we can choose the service here for all servers or anything. And then uh, it will. Uh, open this collect file options you you need to give the uh, browse the path as well you need to give the time frame as well from to make sure you do not zip files here because it will create a lot of mess if you want to uh, create a zip file then do click on this do not zip files take the traces and then zip it on your local machine okay you should do that on your local machine, not on the server. OK, then we have the query widget. If you want to save a query, once you click on this this, way, uh, and this query widget, so it's, it's also the same, same selection process as in collect files. You can save queries for future use. You can set call processing levels as well. So you will be under this one. You will select this service. It's called call manager for all servers all available traces or absolute range which you want to choose and once you click on next you will be able to see this trace browse on demand trace collection or the schedule down trace browse and once you can click the save query as well as you can click the run query it will be under this one query widget and sdl traces and once this query is raised you can download the traces from here as well from this particular query after that, we have schedule collection, same selection process as in collect files, same thing. Can choose to collect all files or collect matching ones to the query string, upload TFTP server, collect files generated. I think we already discussed about this thing, like how we can uh, download the trace. We were at SFTP or FTP server, right? So you are in schedule collection and you can just choose the schedule start time, date time. Once you click on this download, like the check mark of download once you click on this one and click on finish it will uh, open this one sftp server because you need an sftp or ftp server to download anything right i hope this thing will be clear this thing is clear to you then we have this thing like if trace collection server is down and a scheduled job fails there will be an alarm raised at the local server which experienced the problem right if you but if you already scheduled the collection traces and that trace collection server is down and that job fails it will create an error alarm and that will be like this one sftp server this one is not reachable and when the collection job resumes it will not go back and collect the trace file since the first failed job it will only go back up to the scheduled interval it will be for the upcoming not for the previous one right 
And then we have the, uh, how we can check the real time traces. You can go to the trace and log central, real time trace and the view real time data. Once you click on this one, you need to choose the category services and the trace file type. So we need to choose the SDL because after CUCM 10, we will be getting this SDL only. Okay. And then uh, you can check the traces here. Uh, like how you can monitor the user events, you can check it here. Like once you click on the monitor user event under the real time trace, you can check it here. You can check the node particular. You can select it from the drop down. Once you click on next, it will ask for the same category services and the trace file type that is SDL. Next, after that, in this, it will ask for the search string. Like if you are uh, checking the CNF string, like here in this example, it's CNF string from time, date time and action. What you need alert local syslog or the remote syslog. Okay, and once you click on finish, you will be able to see this alert description. Okay, then this is a, just a, a use case example. Like uh, the problem statement is I have very crafty UC admins who managed to create cold routing loops via our SIP trunks between SME and leaf clusters. How can I detect these cold routing loops and get notified like uh, traces or alerts? How can I detect these cold routing loops? So solution is the Q850 course code of 25 could be used to detect such conditions. Why? Because this code is used, this Q850 code is used when a SIP call is rejected with a 483 response code upon duplicating the maximum forwards count. Like in this example, uh, reason Q850 course 25 is occurred because 483, too many hops, too many hops since the maximum forward count are too many that's why it is uh, sending a call is rejected with a 483 and the reason is q850 cost 25. so we can set up a monitor user event job against the call manager traces to detect it we can do this and notify admins via an alert email or syslog right so use case example like you can create events you can choose the particular node and you can check the you can uh, click on this one trace file type the same things which we did it previously and in this section options you can check alert and the local syslog and here in the search string earlier we entered cnf now for this you need to enter this reason q850 cause 25 and finish right then we have this syslog viewer that is system logs uh, in the syslog viewer we have system logs application logs and the security logs system log it it uh, messages log file these messages log file contains os logs and platform agent logs application log like for the logs for all the applications security logs it is uh, it is directly related with the security secure log files contain security related messages such as all login attempts to the platform and other internal process executions at privileged level. Like it will show all the login attempts and all these things. Like uh, you are in the syslog viewer, you will be able to see system logs, application logs, and the security logs. In the system logs, you are on the messages and you can check it here. You can choose the severity process, machine name and message, all these things. And the message, you can like enter it here. Domain name server is now reachable, DNS watchdog automatically restart and all, all, all these things in that particular syslog viewer, the message, particular message in the syslog viewer. This is the audit log viewer. Actually, if you want to like, uh, this is mainly uh, used for the, you know, like the device update, I can say. Yes, the device update, like we want to audit it for the, like when the device was updated and all these things. So this is the particular, we, I already choose it here for the device update. Here you can see what is the event type that is device update. Swirite, this is just a notice that device is updated, right? So it is under the audit logs. Then we have this thing that is a very, very important thing that is device search. So what are other things you can do with this device search? So you can use device search to find out the last activities of devices. And 
which devices you can you can check when they last registered when they failed over when they failed back and when they unregistered and uh, you can check out the last activities of particular devices like phone gateway http devices cdi zip trunk countries and all this right so once you click on this device search uh, you need to choose this one like uh, whether you want to check the activity for registered unregistered partial registered rejected any status device only configured so if we choose like a registered one it will one select phone to monitor select device with download status you can say any status then it it's asking for select phone to monitor search by device model protocol any protocol if you if you know like a SIP protocol you can choose if you will say SCCP if you know then you can choose it here or protocol any model after that you need to select the phone to monitor and here search with name any name or address if you know the directory number device name description i if you have the particular phone and you know the device name you know the directory number you can choose it here as well and after that you want to monitor following attributes what all are the attributes you want to monitor name node ip login stamp uh, download failure reason status and you can click on finish so from this you can search for anything related with the registered one failed over failed back or unregistered so once you click on that one once you do that you can you can see it here we did for the phone it is showing like for this particular for that particular time frame the same phone it got registered and it got unregistered i can see it here directory number is there so it got unregistered because device initiated reset oh, that's why it is showing like this in that particular device search right so timestamp would be mainly in the rtmt clients time zone make sure this should be the you should know about this okay then we have device search sip trunk detailed service status if you want to check the detailed sip service status sip trunk detailed service status you can check it there as well. like this one in this uh, once you click on sip trunk it will show these things and you want to check when it's up when it's down and all these things right so the only way to see a sip trunks real time service status per node this is the only way click on a trunk running on a node to see detail status you can click on the trunk which is running and you can uh, check the detailed status right so status shown per destination from a unified cms node perspective status reason maps to sip trunk out of service alarm definition reasons here you can see the status that is up or down and in the destination status reason like it's showing local equals to two and we have remote 503 as well. local equals to two means local sip stack is not able to create a socket connection with the remote and if you are getting this remote 503 503 that means 503 service is unavailable that is a standard rfc error code and this is applicable only to sip trunks where options ping is enabled you should have yeah, i believe you, sh you you should know about this thing like options ping is enabled okay and historical sip trunk status available via call manager alarms like sip trunk out of service sip trunk in service sip trunk partial in service then uh, i believe uh, i we already completed this one rtmt thing this is just a uh, analysis manager overview a client application is rtmt it provides a single user interface for troubleshooting functions across the following uc products like cucm business addition unity presence contact center ios voice gateways right so i hope uh, you get something from this rtmt session if you have any queries uh, about anything related with the rtmt just let me know in the comment section and if you like it please like share and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.